Hey folks, welcome back. I thought it might be uh, interesting to do a quick little update on uh, the War Diary magazine. Now I had uh, subscribed to this uh, a little while back and I wasn't really sure about it, but uh, a couple of, uh, one of my friends is uh, writing in this, uh, Jeff Newell, and I know Joel Toppin from uh, online and I guess we've all seen his videos and lots of posts and stuff on Facebook and things like that. He does a great job and I wanted to read his Operation Husky article. I was also interested uh, in this Michael Ranella uh, chap. Now, I've uh, read a little bit about him and seen him around online, and uh, he has some fairly definitive opinions on bits and pieces. Uh, so I thought, well, you know, let's give, this, uh, let's give this a shot and see what it's like. It's a very inexpensive magazine, and it's completely focused on gaming. Uh, uh, so, uh, and war gaming in particular, although there is a, uh, I think there's a Euro review in here for some reason or other. Anyway, so let's have a quick look at this. Uh, it's a, a basically a black and white magazine in general. The ads are in color. There's no, there's not a lot of uh, color stuff in here, I don't think, anyway. Uh, now this first article, we're gonna come back and talk about the Ghost Division uh, article in a second. Uh, there's a little insert here for uh, COA. Robote things, let's get past all these footnotes and things. Uh, so the Grand Alliance uh, article is really kind of cool because it gives a little expansion and uh, some optional rules for uh, Barbarossa Berlin, which is kind of nice. And I think uh, there's an artist credited in here somewhere. I'll have to look his name up, but uh, this is pretty interesting art. I quite like it, actually. It's all hand-drawn and looks it looks good. It's better than just having a stock photo slapped in there. Uh, so there's a nice, uh, decent article on there. And then Joel wrote this article uh, also with the artwork. Uh, on Operation Husky and the approach to uh, the invasion and gives a nice historical background, really well done. Uh, unfortunately, it's in typical Joel Toppin uh, approach. He is such a nice guy. He's not gonna make a commitment one way or the other on which approach is best. M maybe both approaches are valid the, in terms of the ones and strategies that he chose, but he does make a commitment. And uh, Joel's never got anything negative to say about anything, I don't think. But uh, I was looking for him to say, yes, this is the way to go. You can do this uh, with the alternative landing plan. This is the one. This is the break the game strategy. Well, not the break the game strategy, but, you know, just the strategy, right? So anyway, there's that. Uh, E-gaming. Okay, if you don't know how to get on a freaking internet and find a game, I'm sorry. Uh, you shouldn't be reading the magazine. Maybe you should be reading the magazine and not being online. I don't know. Anyway, nice article. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. This is a, this was interesting, just this guy's background. Uh, John's been around for a long time as well and designed some cool games, so I give him a lot of credit for thinking this through and doing a really nice job on kind of taking us through the landscape of different games and the different uh, eras and themes. Um, I do not know why this review is in here. Uh, another review here. This is actually a pretty inter interesting review uh, of the great game. I had not heard of this title at all, and it... Uh, Although it's point to point, it uh, got me interested in having a look. And then Jeff does his article about uh, uh, you know gaming and why he games and what he likes about games uh, and what attracts him to games. Uh, there's a, a little problem with the, the ink printing on uh, some of the pages, and I think it's only when there's color on the other side. But other than that, the magazine comes out real well. Let's go back to this uh, Rommel article. It's 19 pages long. And you think, well, that's pretty cool, 19 pages. And when I first started reading it, I was like, oh, wow, 19 pages is going to be great. And so I started digging in, and I really didn't learn anything brand new, just a lot more detail, a little nuance and more detail. But uh, there's five and a half pages of freaking uh, footnotes. I, 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 I mean, what, what the hell are you doing? And why fill the magazine with this? It's a waste of space. And we could have had another article in here from someone. Uh, or, or uh, you know, a, a lighter magazine or uh, something interesting. But footnotes I'm not going to I'm not going to go and verify these if you're writing in the magazine I'm going to trust you to a certain degree put a link in here that I can go to on your website and look at all the, at the bibliography and then I can maybe go through and click through to some of these things if they're online I know the little heart's not online right but uh, you know he's referred to you know, most of the time in here and then, there's just a bunch of stuff in here so all of this detail and all this validation of facts and everything and then the dude goes and gets the freaking story wrong one part of this here, where is it here? Yeah, so Rommel is, uh, he's ordered the uh, 7th Motor uh, Infantry Regiment uh, down uh, uh, west of Diné. And uh, there's a radio communication that comes in and it talks about uh, uh, that uh, the uh, forces had arrived, which is uh, Eingentroffen, uh, 
Uh, von Bismarck's message, however, was misunderstood as having announced he was encircled. Well, in actual fact, it wasn't misunderstood. They were encircled. And what the radio uh, uh, person heard was that they had arrived. Or it was the other way around, which is it? And so you read this through and it says the article talks about how they were indeed encircled and they had to, you know, there had to be this rescue. Um, and it just, if you're going to write a 19 page article and you're going to provide all these factual details and all these sorts of things and show me how smart you are, which is kind of how it comes off is okay, look how clever I am. Look at all these resources, look at all these things I did. And then you're going to get, you know, a fundamental part of your story wrong. I'm sorry, kind of annoying. Now, all that said, is this a worthwhile magazine getting to get, to obtain, to purchase, to subscribe to? I think it potentially is because if they do one good historical, accurate historical article, each issue, and provide some nice backgrounders on how to play games or how to play a certain type of game or strategies to take in a game and some little you know options and mods and things like that i think that's well worth 28 bucks for four issues deal there's no game to deal with there's no rules to pull out there's no counters to pull out there's no map to hand and mess with and i'm kind of i i, I like the writers of this magazine who've basically uh, i think john is the uh, the editor they said you know look we just want to make a, a war game magazine about war games and not provide you anything else just the magazine and i kind of like that because Stop trying to throw extra stuff in that half the time I've got to reprint the rules because it's full of errata or even, you know, the latest paper wars. There's problems on the map. The map's wrong. I mean, if you can't get it right and look at, God forbid, look at the friggin' S&T magazines lately. The games have been atrocious. Um, I like this idea. Get me a magazine once a quarter, 20, this is probably what, 40 pages? I mean, look how long it is. Yeah, 42, 43 pages of good solid content i read the thing cover to cover enjoyed it all good stuff uh but mr manella let's get our facts straight okay but talk to you soon